on top. Now, I've made I've, I've made a conscious effort to not speak about Ange every single week because, as much as I really want to, but I did realise it was it's going to get very repetitive. I'll come on here and say, how good is Ange? Tottenham are really good. I told you so, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I will kind of made a conscious effort to just not really speak about them every week, just kind of let them go about their thing. And I really did want to start speaking about them again when they started losing because I think the narrative around it is interesting. Obviously, we spoke a little bit on the on the 4-1 loss to Chelsea. Very, very unfortunate defeat. Like I said, they dominated Chelsea for the first part of the game, right? They just dominated. Before Romero gets sent off, it was going to be a cruisy, cruisy performance, right? Regardless of how much they were going to win by, they were going to win regardless, right? So I thought once Romero gets off, the, gets sent off, the game changes. Once Van de Ven gets injured, the game changes. And once Madison gets uh, gets injured, the game changes. Three of your best players, three of your most important players out of that game immediately. You're down to nine men. And I, th- mate, <laughs> mate, you know how when Ange, you know, I, I, I said this constantly, Ange will stick to his guns. Like he said, you don't stop being that Maccas if you're a vegetarian just because you're hungry. You stick to your your ways and you stick to your ideologies. That high line, that high press against Chelsea worked. It worked because we couldn't find a way around it for the for the good portion of the game. And they went for it, and it was a it was a pride thing for Ange. He did not want to he did not want to put his kind of ideologies to one side just to try and salvage a result because that's the normal convention and the footballing convention is when you're down to nine men you sit back you get compact and you flood numbers behind the ball but Andrew's like no nah, fuck this I'm gonna go for it and realistically if Eric Dyer just holds his run for half a second it's 2-2 and if like I think Benton Core had a great chance I think Sun had a great chance if they still created chances because of just how fluid they are going forward but regardless the four the four on loss it is what it is the most important part of that game, in my opinion, is the Van de Ven and the Madison injuries. Both will be out until the new year. Both are significant injuries, and it showed in the game against. Um, it showed in the game against. Um, who did they verse? Wolves, right? They obviously we know Romero, but he'll be back next game or in a couple of games. It's a straight red, so I don't know how how long he's actually out for. But they had to go with what Davies and Dyer as as the two centre halves, which. He's just a, he's just a catastrophe waiting to happen. Both two players who just aren't tot, aren't Ange Postecoglou centre backs. They had a, they had obviously Emerson Royale was playing in in, in place of Dogie. A really interesting game to watch because Spurs started well, scored nice and early. Brennan Johnson gets Spurs off and running, and then Wolves started getting a bit more ascendancy into the game. Spurs started to get a little bit more tired, and Wolves. Started getting a foothold in the game. They scored the goal through. Who scored the first, who scored their first goal? Was it um, who scored their first goal? Come on, Sarabia scored their first in the ninety first minute, and then Lamina with a well taken finish in the ninety seventh to to salvage three points or victory from the jaws of defeat for Wolves. Now, Ange, this is something that is going to be really interesting. Really interesting to see how it develops because. This is the these are the first two losses Ange has suffered as Tottenham boss in competitive fixtures. They've got Villa, they've got Villa at home, Man City away, West Ham at home, Newcastle at home. Four tough games, tough games. You're looking at those next four fixtures and you're thinking, right, okay. Min- so you get you're not going to have Romero is going to miss I think maybe two more of those games, maybe one more. Van de Ven and Madison, right, as well as a Dogie, right. Although he was a, was a second year, so he should be back, I'm pretty sure. But regardless, right? Regardless. It's a going to be very interesting to see. And I can't, and I, I'm, I'm really intrigued because Ange loves a challenge. Ange is a manager who looks adversity in the face and says, fuck you, right? He doesn't falter. He doesn't cave. He's shown anyway that he doesn't cave. Whether or not, because you just know the English media are going to be on him. They're going to be on him now. You've lost two in a row. Your two best players are out injured. The lack of squad depth. You started so well. You can't capitulate. Your Spurs, Spurs, the the Spursy bottle bottle jobs, whatever. It's going to come back come back to haunt them. The media will be on him. They'll be on his squad. Does he have the bottle to look them in the face and say get fucked and keep going in the same way that he's going? I think he does. Right? I think he does. However, I just think. Your ideologies can only get you so far when the talent isn't there. 
And that's not his fault because he's had a preseason, right? He's had one preseason, he's had one transfer window in which they had to really get the Harry Kane situation sorted before they could get anything else sorted because Spurs are obviously a team that you need to sell to spend. The only asset that they had to sell that actually had good value was Kane, maybe Son, but they were never going to sell both of them, right? They were never going to sell one of them. As soon as Kane goes, then the justification of the signings and allowing and the allowing of more signings to be brought in can happen, right? So he needs another he needs another full transfer window to get fully his players embedded into his system because Ben Davies is not an Ange Postecoglou centre back. Eric Dyer is not an Ange Postecoglou centre back. Players like Hoiberg, I don't see a future for him. I think Ben Tancourt, like he what made a sub appearance on the weekends, um, if I am not mistaken. Yeah, he did. I think once he starts to get fully fit again, he can be a really integral player in their system. I just. I just worry because it was the one thing that was going to be the catalyst for Spurs at down four. It was Van der Ven, Madison, Son, um, and Romero. Those four players. And they've lost two of them to long-term injuries. One of them got suspended. One of them has been suspended. And we don't know how well he's going to be able to integrate back into the team after a couple of weeks out. So I think they'll be okay. And I think we're going to see the natural lull and plateau, and maybe a little bit of regression. However, pro- uh, success is not linear. Progression is not linear. You can't expect Ange to start at this level and just continue to go up. He started at this level, and it's going to go down, and it's going to come back up. It's going to go down, it's going to come back up. But I think eventually, it will come to a point where he will get he will get through it, and he and we'll see the best out of Ange. What what needs to happen now is the fans need to stick by him. And the board need to stick by him. Because the media are going to try and put pressure. The media are going to try and basically assassinate his job. So the fans need to get behind him. The board needs to get behind him. And realise, okay, when Van der Ven and Madison are still out, with no proper squad depth, this period is going to be tough. We've got four tough games in a row. If we can get through those relatively unharmed, we can get into the new year, we can get into the Christmas break, and we can regroup probably during the January transfer window once we start to get those players back. But the club needs to stay united because we've sh- they showed that with the United squad and with the United club in the first, however, 12 games of the season, we've seen just how good Ange can be. So just because they lose a couple, that, u- that unity can't fall and needs to stay strong, and that's how they get through this inevitably tough patch because it's going to be really interesting because this is the first proper adversity, adversity? adversity that Ange... Will go has this is the first proper adversity, adver, adversity that Ange has and will go through since his time in Japan. Because realistically, at in Celt, at Celtic, there wasn't a lot of there wasn't a lot of bad. It was made majority good, right? So this is going to be the first kind of pitfall that Ange is going to have to face in a while. So it's going to be interesting to see whether or not he can really get, he can really stay grounded and really not let the pressure and the media get to his head to really kick on. I think, I think it'll be fine. I think Spurs will be fine. I think they'll maybe lose a couple of games. I think there's a, there's a big reality within, there's a big reality that for the next four games, Villa, City, West Ham and Newcastle, that Spurs only take four points for the next four games. There's a, there's a big possibility. Like City always going to be tough. Newcastle's always tough. Villa, potential banana skin, the same with West Ham. They're lucky that three of those games are at home, and they're lucky that their two games following that are Forest and Everton, two games which they should win. So I think over the next four, if they can take six points over the next four games, big win. And if they can take 12 points over their next six, minimum, big win as well. Because with your two best players out, it's going to be tough. So yeah, I don't know. I feel like Angie's going to be fine, and I still think they'll finish top four. I definitely still think they'll finish top four. I think they are definitely still good enough, um, as long as they can just ins- as long as they can just maintain, as long as they can just maintain that kind of that unity, unity and that stability that they'll finish off for no dramas. So yeah, I don't know, just one of those things, definitely just one of those things. Overall, I think Spurs will be fine. I think they'll be okay. It's just one of those natural ebbs and flows throughout the season. It would this stupidly good win win streak or unbeaten streak was never gonna last. Um and I just I had a feeling that Chelsea were gonna win. I don't know. I just had this thing like 
Ange has been so good, Tottenham have been so good, Chelsea have been so bad. It was either going to finish 5-0 to Spurs or Chelsea were going to win. Um, just the way that Chelsea won was very unfortunate for Spurs, I think you can call it, but um, yeah.